Hey, good morning, 10 o'clock service. How are you guys? Man, I am so excited to, to be back. I know I've been gone for a couple of weeks. I've had an opportunity to, to teach in other church contexts. And, uh, and specifically this past week, I wanted to thank you for giving me an opportunity uh, to, to be with my grandfather as he, as he passed away. Uh, it was just an amazing opportunity to, to sit uh, with him and to be by his bedside as he, as he went to be with Jesus. I want to share with you just how amazing of a morning that was. He passed away on Sunday afternoon. And uh, I went to church that morning, and we got back, and my sister and I were both there, and we were on either side, and, and uh, some uncles were there with us. And uh, we heard that my grandfather had a girlfriend. He was a widower. And he had a girlfriend who's been hanging out with him for the past eight years. And she told us that his favorite song was uh, So I Can, Only, I Can Only Imagine. So we, uh, we put the song on, my sister and I, and we were singing this song to my grandfather. He was far enough along in his death process that he wasn't able to open his eyes or speak anymore. Uh, but while we were singing to him, he started humming along with us to the song. It was amazing, uh, a reminder that he, that he knew we were there and he could hear us and he was interacting with the, the music. And, and then he kind of mustered out the, the final words, um, I can only imagine. And I, I'm no, no doubt uh, that was a really special time for us. He knew where he was headed and uh, we have a whole bunch of peace uh, knowing that he's, he's with the Lord. So thank you for praying for me and my family. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Matt. For those of you who don't know who I am, I serve here at ACC as one of the pastors, and uh, I have an opportunity this Sunday as a third part of our Better Together series uh, to teach about what it looks like, another metaphor of what it looks like to be a part of the church. Before we do that, though, I want to I issue a challenge. You're going to hear an announcement video at the end of this message talking about our Better Together outreach event, which is next Saturday. It's this Saturday, uh, coming up six days from now. We had a goal to have 100 people from our church participate in that. When we filmed our announcement video, we only had about 50 signed up. Uh, as of today, we're basically at 100 already signed up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to up the goal, all right? We are, by midnight tonight, let's be at 150 people signed up to participate in that. So if you, uh, we're closing off all registrations tonight at midnight because we need the entire week to place people in different places throughout the community. So if you have yet to sign up for Better Together, uh, we wanna make sure we order you your shirt and get everything ready for you. You need to sign up by midnight tonight and we are gonna go from 100 to 150 today. And I believe in us, I know we can do it. So go, go and sign up. Uh, there are all sorts of ways to help. If you are worried about uh, your, your abilities or your, uh, your, uh, w whether or not you'll be able to serve, there is a way that you can help in some capacity. So make sure you go and sign up for that. You know, I am so excited uh, that you guys, didn't you guys get to hear some awesome messages these past couple weeks? Pastor Tim and Pastor Sammy. Isn't that awesome? An incredible challenge to us as a church. And you guys are probably bummed. You're like, oh man, Matt's back. That's all right. Um, you know, I am, I'm so excited to be working with Pastor Tim and Sammy, and next week you're going to get to hear from Pastor Nate at Abundant Life Church. We are just so uh, excited about this picture of recognizing that in Glen Burnie, we ought to work together to change this community for Christ, because we live in a, a time right now where there's so much division amongst us. We can find so many things to divide us, can't we? Our politics and our views on different... Let me, let me show you an example. Let me see if I can start a fight here this morning, okay? Uh, how many of you are extroverts? Raise your hand. And like an extrovert does, raise it and wave it because you want everyone to see you, right? How many of you are introverts? Yeah, have your neighbor raise your hand for you, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, see, we have different personalities even within this room, different personality types. How many of you are, um, if, if you had the opportunity to either read the book or watch the movie, how many of you are read the book people? Yeah, I don't get you at all. They made a movie. You don't have to read it. You just get to, how many of you are watch the movie people with me? Yeah, that's, those are my people. All right. Uh, how about this? Morning people versus night people. How many of you are morning people? Yeah, morning people. Hey, we have an 830 service that we could use more people in. <laughs> So morning people, try out 8.30. How about night people? 
Night people, yeah, that's, those are my, my crew. And so far, I'm showing off some, uh, some differences between us, but those aren't really things that we'd fight about, right? If we want to really start a fight, I've got to move into some other territory here. How many of you are Apple people? Apple people, raise your hand nice and high. How many of you are Android people? Now, Android people, keep your hand up if you're a bit of a snob about it and you tell everyone all the time, okay? Now, all right, you, I'm going to go for the jugular here. Here we go. We're going to do the cat-dog thing here in a second, okay? <laughs> now, listen, before we vote, don't forget, dogs were made special by God. They, they love you. They care about you. <laughs> they, they're, they're amazing, uh, uh, loving beings. Cats could care less whether or not you live or die. Let's vote. Dog people. Dog people. Yeah. How about cat people? Uh, who cares? All right. Um, <laughs> But listen, there's so many things about us that cause division. And within the church, uh, there's different theology and there's different things about uh, within our churches that divide us. There's different uh, politics that divide us. We have never been more divided before. It is so hard now to feel unified with anybody because we find all the things there are to disagree about. It reminds me of, of a joke. There, there was a, a guy who got stranded on a deserted island. And he was there for 10 years waiting for someone to rescue him. And one day, he sees this boat out in the distance. And he gets excited. So he goes and he lights his signal fire. And he's doing all sorts of stuff with the smoke to try to signal this boat. And sure enough, the boat recognizes uh, the, the, the signal and turns course. And within hours, there's Coast Guard coming ashore. And this guy is finally getting rescued. And the head of the Coast Guard kind of comes up to him and, and says, wow, how many of you are, are there here? And he says, it's just me. He says, how long have you been here? He says, I've been here for 10 years. He said, wow. You know, when we were coming ashore, I couldn't help but notice that you've built three different structures. What's the story about those? And he says, oh, well, this one here uh, on the left, this is my home. It's where I eat and sleep. He said, okay, well, what about the one in the middle? He says, oh, this middle one, that's where I go to church. It's where I worship God and I pray and I read my Bible. I'm like, well, what about this one over here? And he says, oh, that's where I used to go to church. <laughs> All right, think about it. Like, we, we, can, we can even be divided within our own minds about things from, times, uh, from time to time. And there's never been a time, I think, in the history of the church where there's more important than ever for us to come together and recognize that God has called us into a, a picture of, of unity. And that's why the metaphor we're going to talk about today is so important. Before I share that with you, I want to read a verse to you uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. By the way, we're going to spend all of our day, uh, all of our morning in 1 Corinthians 12, so if you want to turn there. Uh, verse 13 says, For we were all baptized... By Say this next word with me, one spirit. Every time we get to the word one, read it with me. Uh, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. You see this beautiful idea of there's so many different people that make up the body of Christ, but the, the, the concept that we ought to remember is that we're called to unity. We're called to oneness. We have this baptistry over here and it's filled with water and many of you in this room you've been baptized in this baptistry I was baptized in a different baptistry in a different body of water in, in California when I was nine years old and many of you you might have been baptized somewhere else in another church and at Faith Baptist Church they baptize people in their baptistry and at Abundant Life and at Lighthouse and all of us are baptized in these different bodies of water maybe some of you have been baptized in an actual like river or stream or lake but here's the deal it doesn't matter what body of water you were baptized in all of us that have been baptized we've been baptized into one spirit we've been baptized into one salvation focused on one singular jesus christ worshiping the, the same one god now that's not always true there are other religions who don't know the same god we do and don't trust the same Jesus and believe in the same Bible and what this Bible says to be true like we do. But those of us who, who agree on the essentials of the faith, we've been baptized into one spirit together. And these other churches that we're participating in this series with, 
I can, I can guarantee to you they love the same Jesus and the same God that I do. And there's something beautiful about knowing that and recognizing that and, and loving that. So today, the metaphor we're going to tackle uh, is, is the body of Christ. It's this anatomical metaphor. You look up here and you see my body right here. There's this body. What does it mean and why did we use this metaphor to explain the church? We're going to talk about that this morning. Let's pray together. Father, I ask right now that you would help us to see what it is you want us to learn about your church and about ourselves through this metaphor you've given to us of the body. God, I I recognize that there's something, everyone in this room, myself included, God, we need to learn this morning and take out of here with us and apply to our lives so we can look more like you and your son. So I ask today that you would bless this teaching and reading of your word and that we would each be transformed the way you need us to be. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So as, uh, if you haven't turned yet to 1 Corinthians 12, uh, as you're doing that, I want to give you a little bit of context. Why does 1 Corinthians 12, or specifically uh, Corinthians, both of the letters to the Corinthian church, why is this church in Corinth, uh, why is this metaphor used to talk, uh, in talking to this church? And it's important to understand the context that the Corinth people, the Corinthian people, uh, the Corinth was like a, a big city. It was a metropolis, very cosmopolitan. If you understand anything about a big city, you know that there's just a ton of diversity in a big city. You have a huge disparity between the rich and the poor. There are a lot of poor in a big city context. There are a lot of wealthy in the big city context. There's people all in between. There's different ethnicities. There's different faith systems, belief systems. That was true in Corinth. And that's why Paul is using this metaphor specifically with the Corinthian church. You see, there were churches that met in homes all throughout Corinth. And in each of those churches, there was a a clickiness of people that kind of gathered that all had something in common. Like maybe this was the church of, you know, the working class. And over here, here were the wealthy. And over here was a church that preferred the teachings of Apollos. And over here was the church that preferred the teachings of Paul. And there was just the division amongst the church. So Paul is writing this letter to the Corinthian church, saying ultimately what I want him and what, what I want God to speak to us this morning If that's you, knock it off. That kind of division doesn't belong in the body of Christ. So why are we using this metaphor? Why did God use this metaphor? And I want to explore four reasons why. Number one, this metaphor is helpful because a body is both one and many at the same time. You think about a body, you you look up here and there's no question how many Matt Osdals there are on stage. There's one body up here. But if you look at, you know, the parts that make up my body, there's all sorts of different parts. You see, a body is both one and many at the same time, just like the church. There are churches all over the place around here. There are many, but we're called to unity. We're called to be connected. We see this in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 12 and 14. It says, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. You see, it's this beautiful picture of two things happening at once. It's unity and diversity at the same time. That's the way God designed the church. Did you know that? Unity and diversity at the same time. In other words, if you just had everyone uh, unified, but there was no diversity, we wouldn't call that the church. We call that just conformity, right? That would just be a bunch of Arundel Christian churches here, and you go across the street, another Arundel Christian church serving the same needs of the community, and another Arundel Christian church serving the same needs of, of the community. And that wouldn't be diversity. That would just be conformity. That would be a whole bunch of the same. At the same time, if you took the different parts and you didn't have any unity and you just had diversity, if you took, for example, if you took my body and you broke it into pieces and scattered it around the room, that's called a crime scene, okay? 
Like that's not good. It wouldn't serve any real purpose. That's not, a, that's not the, the, the way the body was designed to work. So if you take the body and you have a whole bunch of diversity but nothing connecting it, that's just chaos. And that's not the way God designed the church to function. You see, we're called to be both one and many. We are bound together because we share a common mission, a common loyalty to a single Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if we remember that we've been called to be connected around the Great Commission, the thing that God has called us to, to accomplish, to, to love and worship God and to teach other people to do the same, to, to make disciples and baptize people, th- this Great Commission that we've been given, it's what ought to bind us all together under one unified umbrella and purpose. Here's another reason why this body metaphor is so powerful, is that a body requires and celebrates diversity. A body requires and celebrates diversity. You see, different is good. It's really good that you and I are not the same. If there was a whole bunch of me in this room, that would be a really bad thing. There would be so much weakness in this room. And, and because I have areas where I'm just, you know, that, that I'm not good at. There's things that I don't do well. There's something beautiful about diversity that when you and I are together, God's able to kind of meet the needs that, that we can meet together. My dad was really into collecting coins. That was his hobby. He had books and books of, you would open it up, and I never liked this hobby. I didn't enjoy doing it with him because what happened was when I would open up one of his coin books, do you know what I saw? I saw a whole bunch of the same thing over and over again. Now, a real coin collector would know that there was a lot of differences between what I was looking at. But for me, it was just, I just focused on the, the similarities, and I just kind of noticed a whole bunch of the same. And to me, that wasn't exciting. It wasn't, it was, it was boring. Just like I think that if we looked in the phone book and we just saw a whole bunch of the same thing over and over again under the church category, that wouldn't be the fulfilling the purpose that God designed the church to fulfill. We have a saying that we use at Arundel Christian Church, and it, it says this, in essentials, in other words, the things that really matter, the salvation-type things, the things that we really need to understand about God and Jesus and his word and, and the gospel, in those essentials, let's be unified around those things. Let's not have any room for disagreement on the things that really matter. But on the non-essentials, the things that typically break us up into different denominations and churches and and cause church splits, in those non-essential things, let's have liberty. But in all things, let's be a church that's known for love. Let's be a church that loves. So again, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, love. Knowing that we have a common life, a common blood, a soul in our body that unites us all together. In 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 15 and 17, it says, Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. Listen to this last sentence. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? You see, the the concept here is that we all serve a very unique and different purpose within the church. And God designed it that way. God designed some of us to be ears and some of us to be eyes and some of us to be uh, a leg and some of us to be a pinky toe and some of us to whatever. And all of us have been designed to serve a different purpose within the body. And that diversity is what makes each part indispensable. It's also what makes each part so beautiful. Have you ever heard a worship song sung in, in two or three or four different languages at one time? Isn't there something so beautiful about that diversity? Seeing a, a God be worshipped through that diversity all at once? It's beautiful, and that's the way God designed us to function as a church. You see, Faith Baptist Church and Lighthouse and Arundel Christian Church and Abundant Life Church, and all, all the churches in this area that, that love the same God and Jesus and trust this Bible and uh, its gospel. 
all of us have different strengths and focuses. We have different service styles. When I was at Faith Baptist, uh, for one of their services, I put on a sports coat. I didn't like that too much. (laughs) Um, We have different size dynamics. Our churches are different sizes, and different sizes function different ways. We have different locations, which is an amazing thing. There are some people that maybe you're in this room right now. The reason you chose to attend Arundel Christian Church is because you can walk here. I'm really glad God put a church here for you. You see, we have to recognize that God has equipped each of us with a unique set of gifts and a unique uh, kind of dynamic so that we can make up the diversity that we ought to celebrate within the church. When I think of a rental Christian church, let me tell you some of the strengths that I think that we offer and, and we do such a great job with it. We're one of the strongest programs in, in the Glen Burnie community. Let me brag on us for just a moment. I think that the children's ministry and the youth ministry program we have at this church is top-notch in this community. I want you to know that. I think our outreach ministry is second to none. Do you know that we are the largest food pantry in Arundel, Anne Arundel County? It's amazing truth. I mean, you guys have easily the best-looking staff of all the churches in this county. So, just joking. That's not true. Listen, here's here's the point. God has equipped us with some strengths that are unique to a Rundle Christian church. But then I can also go to the other churches. I can go to Faith Baptist Church, for example, and say, wow, look at this amazing preschool ministry. Look at what they're doing in, in this. Look at this amazing sports ministry. These are ministries that we don't even touch. These aren't these aren't part of our DNA at all as a church. But thank God that there's a church meeting that need in our community. You see, there's there's these different strengths that we have, and we ought to celebrate those things and recognize the beauty behind them. Here's here's a third thing I want us to see in this metaphor, is that a body, the concept of a body, it points to a creator with a plan. It's hard to think of a body and not think of the fact that it's, it's amazing and wonderful and created, right? When I was holding my, my firstborn daughter for the first time, I have Michaela. She was a little bit premature. She was six pounds. And I'm holding her in my hands, looking at her. No doubt it was a miracle to see what God had done. That God made her and formed her and created her in exactly the way he wanted her to be. And if I can understand that the, the, the church is also a body, That the same focus and energy that went into forming my actual daughter and my my second daughter and my my third daughter and my my wife and and each of you, the the energy that went into creating us, the the energy that went into creating the first body as, as God had created everything just with spoken word and then he kneels down and he forms up some dirt and he breathes his life into it and he creates the first body, Adam, the kind of love and care and attention that went into that creation, we ought to realize through this metaphor is the same love and attention and care God puts into creating and developing his church. There's a uniqueness. There's special pieces to this entire puzzle that is just beautiful. I want to... let me, read, let me read this verse to you. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 18 and 19 says, But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. And if they were all one part, where would the body be? Do you see the beauty in this? That God created. It says that God placed the parts. God, 20 years ago, when a run Christian church was being formed, knew exactly where he wanted ACC to be. He knew exactly who he wanted her to be. He knew that you would be here today as a part of what he was doing. There was a creator with a plan when he created the church and put all of us here in this community to serve and love it. Have you ever felt individually like you just don't know what your part is? 
Have you ever felt useless in the body of Christ? Like, I, I've been told before that I've been gifted. I've been told that I serve a unique purpose, but I just sometimes I struggle to figure out what I'm any good for. I want to I encourage you for a moment, individually. You know, there was a, a medical association that published a, an article of 40 what they call vestigial organs. It listed 40 organs in the human body that according to this organization, because of evolution... Uh, were no longer necessary. That our bodies had somehow evolved away from needing these 40 organs anymore. Do you want to know why they've never published that article again? Because as time went on, they started figuring out what these 40 organs were for. And they started removing them from the list, realizing we better not publish this again or we'll look stupid. They realize that the spleen serves a purpose, that tonsils serve a purpose, that your appendix actually serves a purpose. The, all the things on that list, ser- listen, you can take them out of a body and your body can survive and live without them, but not the way it was exactly designed to function. There's going to be something you're missing by cutting a part out that this, listen, there is no, I'm going to repeat it, not a single vestigial organ in this room. God has a unique and special and important role to play within the body of Christ. And if you feel like you're vestigial, that you, are pur- that you don't serve any real purpose, that if you were gone, no one would notice, I want you to know that that's not true. And maybe you just need to explore a little deeper and harder what God has you here for because there is a purpose for you. Just like there is a purpose for Arundel Christian Church being in this community of churches and a part of the the worldwide capital c church here's here's another uh fourth thing i want to talk about why this metaphor is the body of christ needs to be unified it needs to be unified if i were to take my hands and detach them from my body and put them somewhere else right there they wouldn't serve any real function They would be useless to me at that point. Our body needs all the parts, but not just all the parts. They need to be attached. They need to share one unified body in order to actually serve and and meet the purpose that God designed the body to have. We see this in 1 Corinthians 12, 21 and, and 24 to 26. It says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. A Rundle Christian church can't say to Faith Baptist Church, our community doesn't need you. Lighthouse Church can't say to Abundant Life Church, we don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So there, would, so there should be, listen, no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Do you hear this calling, how we should treat other churches in our community that love and trust the same Jesus we do? They should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. If, here's what this means. If something goes poorly at another church in our community, the kingdom of God is suffering, and we ought to care about that. If a, something amazing happens, if we find out about somebody giving their life to Christ in another context, in another church, we ought to rejoice as a church, knowing that the kingdom is being built up. We ought to rejoice with them. I remember it was two Easter's ago, I believe, that Lighthouse Church baptized like over 200 people on one Sunday. And I remember thinking to myself, how amazing is that? How cool is that? We all ought to be a church that rejoices with each other as God is working within the body. Now, I wanted to kind of run myself through an exercise to see whether or not I really felt this way or if my pride would get in the way. So here, let, me, let me walk you through this thought process. Imagine for a moment that I asked God to cause a revival to happen in Glen Burnie. So I pray and I say, God, I want there to be a revival in Glen Burnie. I want so many people 
to recognize their need for a Savior, that they're giving their life to Christ right and left. We don't even have enough people to know how to handle it. Our, our baptistry is just constantly in use. I, I want so many people to give their life to Christ that there are news agencies flying here to write a story about it. I want that to happen in Glen Burnie. And then God says back to me, Matt, I'm going to answer your prayer. I'm going to do it. But I'm going to do it through Tim at Faith Baptist Church. How would I feel about that? When that article is written, Matt, it's going to talk about where all this started, and it's not going to say your name. It's not going to say Arundel Christian Church anywhere on it. It's just going to talk about the amazing things that God is doing in this community that you asked me to bring revival to. Are you okay with that? And I want you to know that I want to be okay with that. I want us to be a church that is okay with that. Not only okay with it, but rejoices in it, that we recognize, listen, this incredible truth that if we see us as one body with one purpose who are better together, we will celebrate God's work no matter where he's working. We want to be a church that celebrates God wherever he's working, right? We, we recognize that we are better together, right? And I want us to always have that mindset. So here's what I want to, I want to give you a, a so what. I want to give you a what do I do now a homework assignment. And the first one is this. I want you to know that I have told the other churches and their pastors that we are going to be a church that is committed to praying for them. So we are going to purposefully as a church, and even in our closing today, we're going to have an opportunity to pray for them. I want us to be a church that is praying for the other churches in our community. I'm asking you to join me in that. The second thing, I want you to remember to be lifting up Arundel Christian Church because we have a unique part to play in the body of Christ. There's a very specific purpose and plan for us being on and attached to this body. I want you to be praying for us that we would fulfill the purposes that God has given to us. And the third thing is this. Let me give you a little back, back, background here for a moment. When I started working at Arundel Christian Church, I remember vividly the first time I mentioned the name of another church. That, that This happened multiple times within this church context. That as you would say the name of the church, someone would, would, would roll their eyes and say, oh, that church. Let us not ever be a church that rolls our eyes at what God is doing somewhere else. Let us be a church that celebrates and changes the way we think and the way our mind works and recognizes this one truth that we are better together. Let's pray together. Father, I ask right now that you would, that you would honor this time that we've had to spend together. God, I lift up Faith Baptist Church to you. I know that right now they're, they're working on developing and building uh, their, their preschool ministry into an elementary school. God, we pray right now that you would give them the direction they need and the, everything that they need to, to be able to do a great job with that, pros, uh, that project. God, I lift up Lighthouse to you right now. God, I know that they're, they're thinking about uh, campus expansion again and extension and how they might add ad additional campuses to their church. God, we pray that you would give them wisdom and know where and when to do that. God, we lift up abundant life to you right now. and We know that there's preaching happening right now within that church. God, that you'd be working in a mighty way with an abundant life. God, I pray for our church that you would help us to recognize that we are better together, that there's something beautiful about the way you've designed us to all function as uh, multiple parts of one unified body. And we love you and we thank you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.